and if you think I'm gonna pay seventy two, you can have them back. Every one of them. Matter of fact, I think about moving out of your city. That's just one of many disgruntled Flint residents sounding off about the recent streetlight fees enacted by the city. We've got that story and lots more exclusive web content here on Friday and a happy end to the work week to everyone out there. Thanks for watching the Daily Webcast. I'm Jared Smith. As of right now, Flint residents will have to pay a $74 assessment fee on July 1st in order to maintain streetlight services for the struggling city. The assessment is part of a new list of fees for taxpayers, which also includes higher water and sewer rates and a new flat charge for garbage collection. Mike Brown did not attend the meeting, leaving his staff to take the brunt of the public's complaints. My question is, did he use any of the suggestions that were given? I tried to read the paper. I tried to listen to the news. I tried to keep up on what's going on. I'd like to know, did any of our suggestions help? They just can't uh, afford this type of assessment. I believe this is not an assessment, but a forced tax. Residents who own several properties in the city will be required to pay the assessment on each piece of land. We've posted a few of the raw speeches from upset Flint residents sounding off on the streetlight fees. It's interesting stuff, so log on to our homepage, mynbcnews.com, to see more. Staying in Flint, we've updated the story from earlier this week about the driver of an SUV that dragged a Michigan State Trooper more than 200 feet. The driver of that SUV faced a judge Thursday. M Live reports 30 year old Hiram Bell of Flint caused the chase that happened Wednesday night on Flint's northwest side. Witnesses say the chase reached speeds greater than 80 miles per hour for a list of all the charges Bell will face. And trust me, guys, it's a long list. Log on to our homepage, mynbcnews.com. November is just a few months away and President Obama's week long Michigan Road to Recovery Tour made its way through Genesee County on Thursday. The event was held at a Flint business that makes cardboard packaging. The stop was part of the president's ongoing reelection campaign among the participants. Genesee packing owner Veronica Artis. Our community definitely as you know if you've been here a while is dependent upon the automotive recovery being successful. It's been slow, but we are rebounding. We do see growth. Tour organizers say they're hoping to highlight communities which are benefiting from what they say is a revival of the American auto industry and Michigan's manufacturing resurgence. President Obama himself did not attend the event. On the flip side of November's presidential election is Republican candidate Mitt Romney, who is also beefing up campaign efforts in his home state. The Michigan native will be in Frankenmuth on Tuesday, June 19th, as part of his Every Town Counts bus tour. The tour will make stops in New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Wisconsin, and Iowa before wrapping it up here in Michigan. The rally takes place at the Bavarian Inn. Doors open at 8.30 a.m. The program starts at 9.30 and we'll be there all day long. In sports, the Lions wrapped up minicamp on Thursday and won't suit back up until training camp all the way in July. One of many storylines for the Silver and Blue this offseason was second year wideout Titus Young, who had bounced back nicely from his fight with Louis Delmas earlier in June. Despite the tiff, he's still pitching in off the field by helping some of the Lions rookies settle in. You know, they kind of have big eyes to a lot of things, you know, a deer with the, with the headlights on them, you know, they're kind of like, they don't really know what to expect, but, you know, I just told them to expect to mess up, you know, expect to have uh, more errors than you did in college because it's just a different environment, different things. And we have much more on the top stories of the day, including Lions mini camp. In addition to any other news stories you might be interested in, it's on our website, mynbcnews.com. There it is right there. And be sure to chime in on what you read by logging onto our Facebook page. There's the information right below us, facebook.com slash NBC25, or you can find us on Twitter at NBC underscore 25. But don't forget, coming up tonight on NBC 25 News at 6 p.m., we'll have an update from the funeral of T.J. Stewart, the child who was shot and killed last week in Flint. So tune in to Bill Harris and the rest of the NBC 25 News team for that story and much more tonight at 6 p.m. Well, that's it for these news and sports headlines here on Friday. Time now to head over to Janet, who's got a look at the weekend weather forecast. Janet.
Well, a beautiful day and a beautiful weekend ahead today. Temperatures topping out around 87 and we'll see those temperatures fall to around uh, 61 for a low tonight. Still mild tomorrow. We're hitting 90.